This is the old Pikesville Armory outside Baltimore, Maryland. In the 1960s and 70s, my dad and I attended train meets in this historic space. How exciting it always was to be a kid and step through these doors, wondering what kind of haul we'd make. In March of 1969 at Pikesville, the haul included my first Lionel GG1. I saw my first real GG1s near Washington, D.C.'s Union Station when I was a little kid. For over 40 years, these majestic, powerful engines pulled trains over the Pennsylvania Railroad between the nation's capital, New York, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Looking at GG1s and old Lionel catalogs made me want one real bad. But in the late 1960s, Lionel had not made GG1s in several years and it looked like Lionel itself was going out of business. As collector's items, GG1s were not cheap. I was seven years old and had saved up birthday, first communion, and Christmas money all year to get that GG1 at Pikesville. It cost me $35 and was probably overpriced. It is the very common 2332 of 1948 in typical condition its once bright gold lettering and stripes worn off by handling. Lionel's 2332 GG1 was among the company's legendary engines made in the late 1940s just after World War II. Priced at $37.50, the 2332 was expensive for the time, but it was a huge seller. Except for a couple rare variations, the 2332 is the most common of all Lionel GG1s made from 1947 to 1963. The minority, with stripes and lettering that have not worn off, are highly prized. Under the 2332 shell, this is what American made looked like in 1948. This is a ballast weight. This is the reverse unit, what collectors call the E unit. This is the worm drive motor. Next is the sound box relay and the sound box. This was Lionel's first attempt at a loco horn. Working by vibration, the sound box emits a croaking sound that doesn't sound very horny. Beginning in 1950, Lionel issued a mechanically redesigned GG1. Under the shell, it was a very different animal from the 2332. The new chassis carried two Pullmore motors and a horn operated by a D battery. The improved horn still made its sound by vibration. Horn batteries left in these engines by owners often leaked acid, causing damage which can be very extensive. The horns in their relays are themselves erratic and often don't work at all. This is the only time you'll hear a GG1 horn in this video. Lionel's redesigned GG1s of the 1950s also had Lionel's greatest invention since train smoke, magnetraction. Magnetraction enabled Lionel's engines to pull more cars and climb grades. Magnetraction was accomplished by using magnetized axles or bar magnets themselves. In Lionel GG1s, bar magnets are placed over the axles on the power trucks. These magnets are very powerful and can suck up loose screws and bits of metal into the truck, causing jams or short circuits. After a five-year absence from Lionel catalogs, the GG1 reappeared in 1955 
retailing at $49.95. Now numbered 2340, the Cat's Whiskered Engine was not only offered in the familiar Brunswick Green, but also Tuscan Brown. The Tuscan Brown 2340 pulled Lionel's new model of the Pennsylvania Railroad's New York to Washington Congressional Limited. In keeping with the Pennsylvania Railroad's latest color scheme, Lionel's GG1s of the late 50s and early 60s were finished in Tuscan with a single solid stripe. The last of what Lionel collectors call post-war, meaning made after World War II, GG1s were cataloged in 1963. The 16 real GG1s at various railroad museums throughout the U.S. will never run again. Lionel survived the transition of toy trains to an adult hobby and has made many GG1 models since the 1970s. As of 2020, the historic landmark Pikesville Armory is shuttered, awaiting a plan for its future. My Lionel GG1 that I've had for over 50 years and I keep getting older, but we keep running along.